Hi everybody! Let's see if we can get some people in here. Do do do. Waiting on people. Let's see if I can fix my lamp. Let's see if I can find myself. Oh, I got a viewer. Hello, viewer. I'm not sure if comments are gonna work today. Oh, oh, that's way too bright. I look like I'm glowing now. Let me see if I can find myself in the club. Okay. <gasps> Hi! I, Ida? Ida? I never pronounce your name right. I'm so sorry. Hi, Marilyn! Alright. So it looks like comments are working. Fantastic. Seven viewers. I'm just going to let a few people log on. Got my desk lamp on. It's kind of dark today. It's a nice, uh, gloomy, rainy day. Hi, Erin. Do, do, do. Oh, Idaho. Like, I, ah, uh, okay, Ida. So I was right. Fantastic. Hey, Melissa. Yay, people. Oh, good job, Nicole. I was almost late myself. It's like trying to run around and get things done. Hi, Carrie. I'm looking at the screen just to make sure I get everybody's comments. Hope you guys have a pen and paper today. I'm not going to be too, too long, but I found an article that Etsy published. They published it last year, but they relaunched it again this year, like within the past week or so. So because they relaunched it, it still has pertinent information. How's everybody doing with getting the new stats? You guys working with the new stat screen, seeing what people are saying, you seeing where your social media traffic is coming from. Do, do, do. How many people are we up to? 23! Yay! Has anybody never seen a Tips and Tricks? This is, this is going to be... Wait for it. <gasps> tips and Tricks Tuesday! Tips and Tricks Tuesday! Tips and Tricks Tuesday! I don't know what this is. This isn't really dancing. I should be like... <laughs> Yay! No more stocking stats! Still don't like the new stats, but I'm trying. Nicole loves the new stats. Hi, Angie! All right, so the new stats are going to take some getting used to. There are tons of questions about them. I'm not going to go too deep into them today because um, not everybody has them. Yes, I will try to leave more time for questions at the end. Um, I've Even those of you who are avid tips and tricks watchers, I guarantee you that within the next 30 minutes, my daughter's going to wake up from her nap. So I've already got her snack and her juice and the remote pulled aside so that she waddles her little head out here. I will have everything ready for her. Um, don't know why I've never done that before. Oh, thank you. I love it. I have another one that says um, sassy, classy, or classy, sassy, and a bit smart, assy. And it's fantastic because it is so me. So for those of you who have never seen A Tips and Tricks, my name is Lisa Mitchell. Hello. I'm a 100K seller here in Flourish. Um, every Tuesday at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard, I log in and give you some tips and tricks on how to better your Etsy shop. Um, I am loud, I am sarcastic, um, but I am honest, and I will always give you honest feedback. So just bear with me. Sometimes, sometimes people don't get my humor. I tend to have a dry sense of humor, and I use it a lot. <laughs> and I'm loud, but I'm not yelling at you. It's just how I am. Um, yes, yes, sa classy, sassy, and a bit smart assy. That's, that's the other one I have. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to send you guys all an article that is going to be... I'm a great dancer. <laughs> Maybe after a couple drinks, but then I guess it's just because I don't care. <laughs> um... Hi, Charlotte's son and husband. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. So I put an article in the thread in the comments. That is going to be what I'm going to be going over today because this is a very common problem. People either, you know, your sales are always going to be a roller coaster. And what must go, what goes up must come down. Some people um, double and double and double and double and that's great I've had that happen myself but at some point you plateau or you start to come down 
So what do you do? What do you do when things are slow? There are some people, there are a lot of people experiencing that right now. Some people are doing better than they ever have. But besides panic, what can we do when we're slow? So that's what this article is going to be about. And I want to go over it with you guys. And I want you guys to take notes because there's always something you can do. My motto with having a shop is whatever you do, do it better. Do it better than you did yesterday. Do it better than your competition. Whatever your product is, as long as it's better than before or somebody else's, you can't lose. Oh, I just dropped all together. Well, let's get, that, let's get that momentum rolling. What do I do when sales are slow? Work on description, copy, SEO, photos, always photos. Yes, yes, always. There is always something to do. You should never ever be bored. If you're bored, you're doing something wrong. Okay, so with, I'm going to kind of like read the article, but also imply, not imply, include the new, some of the new stats features as well, which for those of you who don't have it, um, no panicking, whether it's not on the app or it's not on uh, the desktop, they're slowly rolling it out. So there's, there's a lot of people that got it today. Um, you might get it tomorrow over the next couple weeks. I think within the next two weeks, max, everybody should have the new stats. You will know you have the new stats when you see graphs. If you start seeing graphs and pie charts and, and stuff, because there's the old stats, there's this weird middle ground, like, in between stats page that they did, that, which is what I had, which is what I thought with the new stats, but it's not. And now there's the new, new stats that's got, uh charts and fantastic, glorious, copious amounts of information. Okay, so what do you do when your sales are slow? Well, gather your facts, as this article says. I'm gonna pull Facebook onto my other monitor so that I don't miss. Okay, hi Jessica. Okay, so gathering the facts. The shop stats tool provides statistics and information about your shop's activity uh, and traffic sources. Especially with these new graphs, you can see now a majority, I was putting 50% of my social media attention towards Facebook and I was putting 50% towards Instagram. I was posting to both of those daily. I have been pushing and pushing and pushing Instagram for my own target market. My own target market is the younger millennial um, attitude-y people. Um, for those of you who don't know, my other stop, I sell uh, piercing alternatives. Faux nose rings, fake lip rings, ear cuffs. So it's got to be kind of punky, and you know, it's got to be very now, hip, things that I am not. If people think, say something is on trend, you can guarantee that I won't do it. Like two years later, that's when I do what was on trend two years ago. It took me three years to start watching Game of Thrones, and now I can't stop. Um, I must have been in the between stats because I don't see all the charts. Yes, yep, you've got this weird middle ground. I don't know why they bothered doing it, but when you get it, you'll see... Uh, a thing on the side, it's going to say dashboard, and then it's going to say your stats, and then it'll show graphs, and it's fantastic. And in this new stats chart, um, you can get information like alternative terms that your customers are searching. So for my own shop, nope, not that tab. Nope, not that tab. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Eh, come on. When my computer wants to work. Okay. So in my own tab for these, these alternative searches that I'm talking about, if I click on stats with the new dashboard, if I go to, when you go to the new stats page, there's three tabs now. It shows you where all your traffic is coming from. It shows you which listings are the most popular and which listings are the least popular. Which listings have gotten you no views, no favorites, no revenue. Let them go. Let it go. Channel your inner Elsa and let it go. We pour our heart and our souls into our products, but you need to be able to accept when a product is not good enough. Um, mine fluctuates. Yeah, sometimes it's weird. It's it's wonky. Mine fluctuates on the app. Um, it didn't it hasn't done it the past couple days, but when it first switched over, it would be like new stats, old stats, new stats. The app was weird. Um, but as much as you guys put into your effort in your products you need to be able to recognize when something isn't working like not 
and like, and I mean, you've tried to promote it, you've tried to build hype about it, you've tried to advertise it, whether you're paying or talking social media. Um, hi, Carol Sue. But like, I've got this listing probably for two years, and it is telling me that I have no favorites, no visits, no orders, no revenue. It's time to let it go. I think it's a great listing. It's a dangly charm ear cuff. Apparently nobody likes it. That's okay. Whenever you release a product line, you need to realize that even if you launch a 10 piece product line, 10 pieces, you came out, you, you did a spring line, whether it's 10 different floral patterns, whether it's 10 different shapes of sign cutouts, three are gonna do good. Two are probably gonna sell and do well in the sales. The other five to seven, over the course of four to eight months, you will notice whether they get activity or not. And if they don't, it's okay for them to fall off. And what you do is you get rid of those, you keep the two that people liked, and you come out with a new product line. This way your shop is not cluttered with a bunch of stuff that nobody wants, but you are keeping the creme de la creme, whatever keywords, and I'm not talking like, don't just do your titles, on said listings, you did your description, and just let it go. Try using, you know, update your titles, update your photos, and if no matter what, you are just working this listing and you're needing the crap out of it, and it's just not working, let it go. It's okay. It's very hard for me to admit that some of these stuff aren't working because I think they're adorable, but apparently there's a reason why they don't exist. People don't want it. Fine, I'll come up with something else. So, <laughs> you got to be able to roll with the punches. Some listings are going to take off and some are just going to plummet. Um, no feeling bad about it. Just let it go. Um, but anyway, that is just fantastic. I love that it tells you, like, seriously, I, the top five listings I have, that's why shop is going to close, not a full-time income. Huh. Well, that's sad. Hmm. Um, I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll message you, Melissa. We'll talk about that. Um, cause I don't want you to give up. Thanks, Amy. Um, but this tells me that like over the time I have five listings, five that give me 90% of my income. I have 138 listings, five give me the majority of my income. The other ones, yeah, I'm trying to make money off of them that sometimes I just make kind of quirky pieces that are just to get people's attention. Like, for the holidays, I did a, a string of Christmas lights, miniature fake Christmas lights from a nose ring to an ear cuff. Nobody wants that. I know that. But it's going to get people to go, what the hell? And click on my listing. And that's what I want because it lured you in, didn't it? Hi, Zandra. Um, anyway, this other chart tells you there's a tab that's going to say customs. Now, in this stats, it's going to tell you other terms that your target market is typing which is incredibly important. Now, some people have found slightly mature content, and some people have found things that are just flat out weird. But there are other terms that your customers are typing. So this is gonna help you understand who's in your shop. Like, who are these people? And if you've got, if your target market ends up being single moms or stay-at-home moms and you find mature content, as your search terms. Well, think about that for a minute. People get lonely. It's okay. You know, nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> but it just helps you know what these people are into. Like last week, mine said um, 80s jewelry and retro high heels and, and all these other things. And like right now it says newborn girl coming home outfit. That tells me that one of my customers was a mom. I've got cartilage earrings, front door wreaths, why are, you, why are you looking at front door wreaths and nose rings? Okay, you're a punky mom. You're a punky homeowner. Good to know. Uh, let's say I have a listing that I know would be popular, and I've updated the SEO. I get an A-plus on Marmalade, but low visits because they can't find it. I already have super popular SEO and tags. Um, I'll have to take a look at the actual listing. If you want to PM me the listing, I can, I can work on that with you. Um, sometimes with Marmalade, I haven't used it myself, but sometimes with Marmalade, they're telling you really good search or low competition search terms, but sometimes it's low competition because nobody's using that terminology. 
So I would encourage you to take the same title and play around with it in the Etsy search bar because much like the Google search bar, if I go to Google and I type in, hold on one second, feels better, I tend to stress about the ones I don't sell. Yeah, focus on your best sellers. Focus on why they're the best sellers. What's the difference between your best sellers and your worst sellers? And diagnose that. Um, but the Google, the Etsy search bar is like the Google search bar. If I go to Google and I type how to make banana, it's going to auto-populate banana foster, banana pudding, banana bread, because a thousand people before me, after they typed the word how to make banana, that's what they typed. So the Etsy search bar works the same way. So if I type in, I don't know, I can't come up with anything creative right now, but if you type in a thing and you see a drop-down menu, that drop-down menu is telling you what thousands of other customers have typed before you. Uh, mine says pressed plow flower frame. Plus, you might also get ideas. Like, depending on what you guys make, if you see what somebody else is searching for, maybe they didn't find it in your shop. If you're a frame seller and you see that one of the alternate terms they searched was pressed flower frame, well then, hell, there's a good idea for a new product line. Get you some pressed flowers and make a pressed flower frame. That's really hard to say. Line. I get weird keywords other customers have searched for, too. Yeah. Finally made it. Hi, Ariana. Um, but yeah, so that's gather your facts. Like seriously spend an entire day. I sell, I sell dresses. Well, it's not necessarily that they were even searching for that in your shop. It's just that after they searched for whatever they looked for in your search, the next search they did in the Etsy search bar was for a flower wreath. So that's telling you the kind of decor people are putting in their homes that buy your dresses. It's just something to think about. Do a search in the Etsy search bar, type pressed flower wreath. See what kind of listings come up. That's the kind of decor people are putting in their home that buys your dress. So that's what I mean by it's building your target market. Does that pressed flower wreath have anything to do with your shop? No, not at all. But these words are gonna help you figure out who is in your shop. What are they into? What are their interests? Um, are they moms? You'll find out if they're looking for searches on baby clothes. Or are they artsy people? Did they then go search for some wire statue? Or not wire, like cast iron art. Something like that. Um, I've got lotion. Front door wreath. Overwatch. Don't even know what an overwatch is. It's probably a watch that goes over something. Natural lotion. Dry oil spray. See, that tells me that if somebody's looking for a dry oil spray or the dry, the dry shampoo, that tells me that it's probably still that younger demographic who went out partying or had a late night, they don't have time to take a shower, or they just don't want to, and for whatever reason, sometimes you can't wash your hair every day, um, especially if you have curly hair, then they're going to do the dry shampoo. That's telling me more about my target because they were in my shop and then they searched for that. I noticed some of the words are things I've searched for on Etsy. Overwatch is a video game. I should know that. I'm a nerd. I'm a video game player. Why do I not know that? But yes, which kind of fits because my people are nerdy people in, in my, my target market. So um, play around with these words, patchwork denim, scarf pins, you know, all of these things Batman and Robin. See, I told you, I got nerdy people in here. Which, Batman, if you ask me, is the worst superhero ever. He's weird, and he's creepy, and he only comes around at night, and he talks like this. And he's only a superhero because he's rich. And if you're going to be a rich, cool superhero, you're going to be Iron Man. Sorry. Overwatch is a team-based online MMORPG shooter video game. Oh, it's a Blizzard game! I should totally know that. I know, like, all the Blizzard games. Did you just type all that or was that a click and copy? Because if you're that super techie, we are totally the same people. For those search terms, do you know if it's today or the time frame? It depends. This one, for me, it's for today. Because if you look in the, if you have the new search and you go in the upper right hand corner, it says today. And then I can change it to yesterday, last seven days, past 30 days. So this is just things that people went in my shop. And then after that, they typed in Harry Potter. They typed in Father's Day gift, vanilla perfume oil, fake plugs, choker necklace, Bandana bib. Okay, that was another mom apparently, unless she's weird and wants a banana bib for herself. But it just tells you things about where your product has the potential of going. Um, 
so spend a day if your if your shop is tanking spend a day in your stats page look at today's search terms look at the past seven days search terms look at where your people are coming from what kind of cultures are they are they international are they US only and try to figure out exactly what type of people are in your shop um, Use the shop stats tool to improve your business by learning which metrics to focus on and how to interpret the numbers. So it's not so much about how many numbers you have, because what if you're a really high-end seller? If you're a really high-end seller, um, you are not probably going to get, if you sell items that are $2,000, $3,000, $500, you're not going to get 20 sales a day. Your numbers are going to, your stats are going to be lower. But that doesn't mean that they're not as good as somebody who has 500 visits or views. You just have to learn how to dissect that information and get what's, you know, what you need out of it. Um, one of the most helpful metrics to calculate your views is now they they're saying the views to sales ratio. You know your conversion rate. Ah, oh, Shannon, you're late. Did you at least bring me a coffee or something? What do I get? Just kidding. I'm glad you made it though. Um, they're talking about conversion rate. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into that because the conversion rate is, conversion rate equals your number total of sales divided by your number total of views times 100. Oh, green tea. You know who makes the best green tea? Panera. They do that green tea with like, not mango, some fruit juice. And it, their Panera green tea is just the best thing on the planet. I drink that stuff by the gallon. Um, but views are different. That's exactly what I was going to say. Views are different than visits. So, oh, um, I was just saying that if you have the new stats, that if you go to the customers tab, all the words that are in it, they are good for their alternate search terms that people have typed, whether it was something they typed before they landed in your shop or after. So it's good to figure out who your target market is by other things they've searched for. And now we're just talking about views. Um, but with the visits, now the difference between a view and a visit is the amount of time that people spend in your shop. Visits, a lot of people hate them, but it is a much more accurate way to track your traffic. And it's going to stop you guys from stat stalking. No more stat stalking. It's creepy. You're going to sit there in a little trench coat and have your like stat screen pulled up and be like, did I get a visit? No, that's weird. You got other shit to do. So a visit or sorry, a view, one person could give you five views. If I go in your shop, that counts as a view. If I click on a listing, that's another view. Do I click on another listing? That's another view. It's going to be three views just from one person. Well, now it looks like you have three visitors, but that's not the way it was. A visit is now one person. One person that can go into your shop, they're going to click on different categories, whatever your shop sections are. They're going to click on your different view on uh, listings, and it is all going to count as one visit. You know why? Because it's one person. Don't be stalking that person. Let them do their searches. Give them a minute to go through your shop. Why are you stalking them? <laughs> I'm weirdly happy that I'm not stat stalking. Yes, you have got better things to do with your time and energy. It is stressful if you sit there and look at your stat screen all day. Let it go. Minimize it. Check it once a day. Check yesterday's stats just to see how much money you made. Check the stats at the end of the day to see how good of a day you had. There is nothing you can do in the middle of the day that is going to make your stats drastically change in 12 hours. You just do your work on your SEO, do your work on your listing descriptions and your pictures, and see what happens. <laughs> and even if, I even learned this myself, there are days where I will have a stellar sales day. Like, absolutely fantastic. I'll get $300 in one day. Friggin' sweet. That means that I'm going to get an epic paycheck from Etsy this week, right? No. You know what happens the next day? Crickets. The next day after that, it's like, eh. And you know what ends up happening at the end of the week? I get the same paycheck as I always get. Because it goes like this. <laughs> I get a fantastic day and then I get two shitty days. Therefore, the totals just equalize. <laughs> I better go check my stats. Melissa. <laughs> I'm trying to let it go and check in the morning and then later at night. Perfect. You guys could have so, just focus on your products. Focus on your stories. 
Focus on how you can convince your, your customers that your product is better or their, their lives will be better with your product. How are you gonna convey that story? That's what you should be focusing on. Foc and make that story come across in your pictures. Have that story come across in the terminology. Have your story come across in your branding. That's what you should be working on 24 seven. Not, did I get another guy? Did I lure somebody else in? <laughs> I need to go to Stats Anonymous. <laughs> so I don't have a new conversion rate for you guys because views are different than visits and visits are going to be much lower. Does this mean that there's less activity in your shop? No, it is the same. It is the same ingredients. Y'all are getting the same ingredients. You got your flour, you got your sugar, and you're still getting a cake. You're still getting the cake. It's just how they're delivering it. They're not serving it on a silver platter anymore. They're putting it on a platinum platter. Same cake, same information. It's not less views. They're not tanking you. They're not hiding you from customers. They're just delivering the cake differently than they were before. Now I really want cake. At least you're not going on Google Analytics, right? <laughs> So I don't know the new conversion rate yet. Um, I would still probably just keep it as 100 visits because 100 visits is now going to be 100 people. Or it could be the same person twice a day, but if they're stagnant for more than 30 minutes, it will register as a new visit. But if you get someone to lurk in your shop for 30 minutes, that's going to be fantastic. So I'm probably going to say it's the same conversion rate for now. All right, so the next section it says is dig into the details. If you see a decline from last year's views, favorites and orders, comparing to your top traffic sources, keywords, pages viewed and listings favorited year over year. So, and that's another thing that Etsy now shows you in your dashboard. It will show you today's stats. See 20 to 30 visits a day, that's fantastic. That's perfectly fine. You got 20 to 30 people in your shop today and it's, Three o'clock, you're good. And my, it'll say uh, orders and then it'll say a percent and then it'll say Y over Y, which is year over year, I think. Yeah, this year over last year. Yeah, Y O Y, year over year. So now, right now my sales today are, are, are kind of abysmal. Um, I am 61% down uh, compared to May 23rd of last year kind of sucks. But whatever, I'll work on it later. When I get out of this call, I'll renew a listing. I'll take down those crappy listings that aren't doing me no good. That way my shop is the creme de la creme. Um, okay, so look at your traffic sources. It tells you how people are arriving at your shop, especially with the new stats. It will tell you if people are searching on cell phones or if it'll show you if they're on the laptop. Are they coming from Facebook? Wow, I never finished that thought from earlier. I do that a lot, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go way backtrack for a second. And when I first started this, I was talking about how I was putting 50% of my attention towards Facebook and 50% towards Instagram. And when they rolled out with these new stats, 1% of my traffic comes from Instagram. One. 56% of my traffic is coming from Pinterest which I did not think my target customers were using. But if 56% of my social media traffic is from Pinterest, guess where my ass is booking it? I'm getting over to Pinterest and I'm gonna make me some new boards. And I'm gonna make sure that they've got tattoos and piercings and cool hairstyles and how to make your own junk food because that's what my people live for. You know what, I think I'm gonna make a board called Bacon Flavored Everything. My people love bacon. Is any of those gonna get me a sale? No but it's gonna keep them active and it's gonna keep them following me because I'm posting things that is gonna keep their attention and then once in a while I'm gonna be like, hey, you going to a party later? You wanna look badass? Get you a nose ring. I know where to get a really good deal on a nose ring. My shop. So that's how you're gonna work mid Pinterest. Those stats make me the happiest because I can see how my store has grown. Yes, what is this? Uh, E-T-E-I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, highlight it, copy it, put it in Google. Bacon flavored nose ring. <laughs> you know, my brother bought a, a, a chalk, uh, it was a Twinkie that was sitting on a strip of bacon and then the bacon under the Twinkie was then dunked in chocolate. Not sure how I feel about that. 
Um, where do direct people come from? Direct people is anything that is a direct link to your store. If you post your link on Facebook and I click on your link, that's a direct visit. If I type your shop name in the Etsy search bar, that is a direct visit. If I type your shop name in the Google search bar, if I just type in whatever your shop name is, .etsy.com, that is a direct visit. Anytime anybody clicks on a link, something where they did not have to do a search to find you. Any other way besides typing a search to find you is a direct link. Uh, hold on. Meh, meh. Oh no, my phone's gonna fall. Okay. Comments, oh my gosh. I noticed that some of my traffic is coming from a weird web address. I typed it in AliExpress. Oh, a lot of people are saying that it's AliExpress. Um, and that's that's what that looked like. I couldn't think of the name. Some people some people copy products or will take your pictures and so I would just do a search for your own product in AliExpress. Um, they are known for stealing things off of Etsy. So it could be worried, but Probably not, because it's just going to be some China guy ripping it off. Sorry if anybody's Chinese, not offending. I just mean somebody's going to cheaply mass produce your product and is going to be lesser quality than your own product. So as long as you're providing good quality products, I wouldn't really worry about it. Uh, a bacon scent. Wait, did somebody say bacon scented nose ring? Oh my God, that'd be so bad. If it was bacon scented nose ring, I'm not saying it would smell bad, but I'd be hungry all friggin' day. <laughs> Uh, every week you motivate me. I look forward to this every Tuesday. I have had two sales while watching this. Go you! Good, that's fantastic. I need to scoot over again. I got my new desk, but my um, my chair sits like over there on this new desk, not over here. So if I start like just creeping out of frame, I apologize. <laughs> I'm trying to stay centered. Um. So yes, dig into your stats, dig into where your traffic is coming from. And if you notice, like mine, more than half of my traffic is coming from uh, cell phones. Now, if you've ever gone on the cell on Etsy or the Etsy app yourself, or in just your browser, your, uh, like mine's called Safari on the iPhone, the Safari app, and you go to Etsy.com and then type in your, your shop name, um, you want to look at how your shop presents itself. Because these people that are shopping on cell phones are putting much more weight into the pictures than the listing description. They've got five pictures. They're going to go picture, 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 picture. New search. Sometimes they will scroll down and click item description or item details. It says item details, which to most people is just going to think they're going to think it's going to be stats and specs because that's what they make it sound like, item details. Which means you have to sell with those five pictures. Answer as many questions as you can. What's the scale? How do I use it? Um, what options does it come in? Um, what are all sides? Make sure you're showing all sides of the product and how does it get shipped? You need to answer all of those questions for those picture buyers. Okay, keep a note of your top keywords, right? Which, um, your top keywords show which of your keywords in your titles and tags are performing the best and which are the worst. Do you still use the same top performing tags? If you see that particular word or phrase is bringing in you a lot of bringing in a lot of views, make sure you're using it in all applicable places. If you notice that some tags on your listings never appear in your shop stats, change them. Um, make sure that you are using some of your title keywords in your listing description and make sure you are copying your titles into your tags. Do not copy your titles into your listing description. Taboo. Don't do it. Bad mojo. Um, also, don't forget that when you guys, the reason why I like these new stats is because when you are checking the last 30 days of stats, it will not include today. The last 30 days now means just that. The last 30 days. Not today. The last seven days is the last seven days. It'll show you Monday to Monday because today's Tuesday. Um, this is much more accurate source of information. Um, do, do, do. and they even used, they even said it right here. This, according to the old stats, shop stats graphs can be misleading if you're comparing this year to last year, but aren't considering that this year is not in progress. So, which is true. Don't look at this year's stats. Make sure you're looking at the past 12 months. 
because looking at this year, it's only showing you the last five months. And then you're going to look at last year's stats? Unless you look at last year's stats and go, hey, I'm Tom. I already beat last year's revenue. Because he's, like, awesome or something. Just kidding, Tom. I know you're awesome. Um, all right. And look past the numbers. I just read at an Etsy published article that implied that the order of tags matters. Can I see that article? Do you have it? Because that could be new. I never took into account the order of tags. But if it's new, I want to read it. Anything you guys find? Not yet. I thought you already did, Tom. Sorry. I'll just be the salt, rubbing it on the wound. And why not, Tom? You slacker. You haven't beat last year's revenue yet? What are you doing just sitting here watching my video? Why aren't you working? <laughs> yeah, share that article. I totally want to read it. Um, okay. Etsy even says, look past the numbers. As helpful as shop stats are in gathering information about your shop, they only tell part of the... <laughs> They only tell part of the story. By examining the various factors that play in your unique business, you can reveal a more complete portrait of what is happening in your shop. For example, if you're seeing a decrease, think back to the actions you took in your shop last year. Were you listing items more frequently? Did you invest more time in fine-tuning your titles, tags, and listing descriptions? Were you spending more in promoted listings? Is it is it's possible a recent dip in traffic or sales to your shop could reflect less time spent on these more successful factors. Keeping a journal of shop actions taken throughout the year can help you decipher what actions had a positive impact and what actions had a negative impact. Someone in Marmalade made that claim about tags. It seems unlikely since Etsy gives you no way to control it. I think Sarah has suggested that in the title, that the title and tags um, I don't know if they have to be in the same order. They definitely need to be the same keywords. Hey, Stephanie! Um, because Etsy specifically says that if you have your title and you pick some of those keywords and use them in your listing description naturally in complete sentences, and then you copy your title into your tags, that is how you build strength be um, behind your key terms. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> Oh, that's a terrible juice. Now I know why my kids aren't drinking it. I figured they weren't drinking it, so I would drink it. Ain't nobody gonna drink it. I don't even know what flavor it is. It's like prune. Ugh. I don't think, no, it's like cranberry. That's what it is, cranberry something. It's too tart. Okay. Um, I have a long-standing theory that keywords act like a tag cloud, which is why you can't split your long tail keywords into multiple tags without any penalty. Hmm. That is a very valid point. Are your products fresh? Sounds weird. Did your products take a shower today? Did they put deodorant on? Uh, under getting found, item number six, Tom Waltz. Hmm. Okay, yeah, just talking to you. Um, when was the last time you refreshed your product line? A product that was a hit three years ago may have lost its appeal with shoppers in the years since you debuted it. It's natural for trends to change over time. This is why also people that um, want so bad to be uh, go viral is not always a good thing because you can get overwhelmed. Yes, it's a lot of revenue, but it's a lot of revenue fast. And as fast as the trend hits, the trend falls off. And then what are you going to do? Going viral is not going to make you successful forever. You have to know that it's like running. You can sprint and then be tired as hell after, or you can just run and run and run and run. After that sprint, you can't just stop and take a break. You got to keep running. At least walk. You got to keep going with something. You need another instant fantastic product. Um, so it's natural for trends to change over time. You can help attract new customers and encourage repeat buyers by introducing new products and fresh variations of existing designs. I have no desire to go viral. <laughs> Is your shop optimized for search? Products can only perform well when they're easy to find. And since we have a lot of new people... Um, for anybody who wants to follow along class, this is the article I'm reading. 
I'm aware that it came out last year, which is why I'm updating the stats portion that I'm telling you, but the rest of it is still valid. Um, products can only perform well when they're easy to find. Optimizing your products for Etsy search requires putting yourself in the mindset of the shoppers and routinely reinvesting, I'm sorry, revisiting your titles and tags to make sure they're working for you. If you're seeing a decline in a specific keyword, Amy suggests, who the hell is Amy? Suggests checking that keyword is still relevant to your work and the commute and the shopper community. Sometimes the way we refer to things changing and trends go by. What? Now they're just losing me. Just make sure you check your titles and tags. They could have just summed that whole paragraph up right there. Keep people's attention. Jeez. Um, let's see. When was the last time you listed a new product? Etsy loves new products. Make sure you are listing new products. And if you are coming out with a product line, it is better to have 10 products. Oh, no, don't lose me, Ida. Oh, well, I hope you're safe, though. Um... It is better to list all 10 of your new products at once as a product line than, oh, I made a new listing, list it. Two weeks later, oh, I made a new listing, list it. What if you have an item that you can only describe in just a handful of terms? Well, in that case, if you have multiple to items that are similar, like myself, where I've got the fake nose rings, there is only so many ways to say fake nose ring, fake news hoop, faux nose ring. Um, what you do is you, if you have two listings that are similar, listing one, you know, because Etsy puts more weight towards the first half of your title. Google only looks at the first half of your title. So um, when you make another listing, take the second half of this title and bump it up to the first half of this listing. So you've got top keywords, keywords that aren't used as much. Take these ones and put them up here. Now all of your keywords are in good key ranking slots. Does that make sense? Um, also, feel free to snoop on your competitors. That is how I came across the word faux. I think the word faux is very stupid. Nobody says faux. Unless you're la to da I don't want to call it a fake nose ring. It is a faux nose hoop. It's a fake nose ring. But... Um, Fake nose or faux nose ring was a term my competitors were using. Therefore, I tried it out, and uh, it is now my shop name. My shop name is now Faux Ferocity. I embrace the stupid, and people love it. So just peer in on your competition. I am not saying to copy their products, but they could have terminology for their items that you haven't thought of before. So that is totally fine. And, and don't copy them if they're a shop that only has, like, a hundred sales that I'm talking to make sure the shop's got like a thousand sales. You want to make sure it's a good thriving product that you're copying the terminology off of that you're getting the keywords. Um, and then once you find that new word, put it in the search bar and make sure that it is what people are typing. Um, because it is sometimes the order. Now what they mean by order is not the order in which, the 13 tags are listed. I mean the order in which um, the key word is listed. So people aren't going to search nose ring fake. They could, but the majority of people type fake nose ring. That can mess a lot of people up because one will get one listing found more than the other. That it's all about the match game. The closer your key terms are to exactly what the customer is typing in that search bar, the greater the chance your product is going to get pulled up, which is why you need to think like the customer when you are making these listing descriptions. Get out of your designer brain. Pretend you know nothing about your product. Stop trying to use, you know, technical terminology to describe your items. Well, this is a bamboo whisk, blah, blah, blah. No, it, it's a friggin' whisk. It's a kitchen gadget. It's a, <laughs> you know what I mean? Make sure you are trying to think like your customers. How, what is your customer going to call this? Your customer is not going to type pink, green, and blue polka dotted toddler t-shirt. Nobody's going to type that. You got to make sure you're typing polka dot t-shirt, toddler t-shirt. They might type toddler polka dot t-shirt, but they are not going to type green, blue, pink polka dot t-shirt. You know what I mean? So it's just things like that with playing around with it. 
And this, I always oh, stress this all the time. What are y'all doing to market your products? I do not mean paid advertising. Paid advertising is good, especially with the, I, I do the Etsy paid listings. I do the Google paid listings. Um, those are good. But outside of that, social media, what are you guys doing to market your products? Are you just posting pictures of your listing descriptions? Are you just posting links? Are you just saying, hey, this is a new product I have coming out. Hey, this is a new fabric I bought today. When you guys relax at the end of the day, when you're calming down, you're just looking for something cool to look at, are you living in the flourish market? Probably not. Maybe, if you want to buy something. You might look at it for a few minutes, just like you look at Pinterest. But when you want to relax and like de-stress for the day, you are not looking at every bead that somebody put on something in the flourish market, are you? You want something funny. You want a new dinner idea so you can stop making the same five things every week. You want a new DIY project to do this weekend with your kids or with your husband or by yourself. You want a new book to read. What are the new movies that are coming out? You want to see a funny video. Well, guess what? Your customers, they want to see the same thing. So you need to figure out what is popular to them. My people love Game of Thrones. My people love Walking Dead. I tried posting about the Super Bowl back in February. The Super Bowl was epic. So many uh, records were broken this Super Bowl. It was friggin' amazing. I was like, great, I'm gonna post this on my social media. This is a, a very hot topic right now because it just happened. Nobody cared. My social, my people are nerdy people. Where do nerdy people spend their time in high school? Not at the football field. If my nerdy people are at the school during a football game, it's because they're stuck in a locker. <laughs> the only sports my people attended was mathlete, maybe the debate team, or detention, because they were punky. They were not, so I, I totally forgot who my target market was. But you know what they loved? The fact that the Super Bowl happened meant that it was the beginning of the Walking Dead season. So the next day I posted, Walking Dead, I did Walking Dead memes, blah de blah which character are you? What do you think is going to happen? And it went crazy because I, I totally forgot who my target market was for a minute. You guys have to do the same thing. It's a lot of ore marching band. You could be getting freaky with the flute. I'm not judging. <laughs> it's things like that that you guys have to keep in mind. And it, it does seem like a lot of work, but it is worth it. If you post even just Monday through Friday, five days, you can pick all of that content out in probably an hour. Pick one day a week where you're going to sit down for an hour and you're going to pick out, <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> you pick out one day a week where you're going to sit down for an hour and pick out your five posts for next week. Monday, motivation. Tuesday, tasty. Wednesday, DIY. Thursday, you post your product. You know why you post your product on Thursday? Thursday's payday. You want people to see your product while they've got money. Thursday, you post your product. And then Friday, you do something funny and goofy. My people love stupid cat videos. They are cat fanatics. I am not a cat person. I am a dog person. I like to roughhouse. I am a tomboy. I can't just sit there and, and, and Dr. Evil it and minouche my cat. I am not a cat person. My husband is a cat. My husband will pick up every single cat he finds. Like, he will stop. When we are going for a walk, I'll look back and he's gone. It's because he found a cat like 100 feet back that he needs to pet. <laughs> yes. Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. Keep it related to the theme and the brand of your product. <laughs> um... So, you know, obviously my stuff is always going to have that punky, my motivational posts, I am not dissing on any religions or anything, but my people don't want to hear, you know, God blessed this beautiful day. No, my people like motivations that have swear words in it. But if you have a religious based shop, I do not suggest you post motivational posts that have swears in them. It's not going to do you any good. <laughs> This one time at Bank Camp, that's exactly what I was going for. Um, I'm more active on Instagram, but I'm seeing that 47% of my traffic... Yeah, you see? 
That's what I'm saying. That's why these new stats are fantastic because now you know where to put your energy. And as soon as you start putting more of your energy towards Facebook, what happens when you start putting posts like this? Now, is a DIY project going to get me a sale? Absolutely not. It's really not. But it's going to keep the people active on my page. And what's going to happen is I post a DIY project on my Facebook. One of my people sees it and shares it or they comment on it or they like it. Then that uh, the more that you get activity on your page, whether it be based on your links to your shop or not, Facebook and Instagram are smart programs. Facebook and Instagram will go, hey, this girl has relevant content. Show her page to more people. It is not so much about finding and going on this epic journey to look for your target market as it is laying out breadcrumbs and letting your target market find you. I feel like more people are looking to Pinterest to purchase something. Yes, that is, I'm finding that too. I had no idea. 56% of my traffic is from Pinterest. I am totally focusing on Pinterest. I let go of Instagram. Instagram is not where my people are. I hate Instagram. I don't understand hashtags. Apparently I'm too old, whatever. But you know what? I got a book yesterday. <laughs> Can't reach it. Now, technically my birthday is not for like three weeks, but I bought a book yesterday. And it's backwards to you guys, isn't it? It says 30, I'm proud of it. So, all, all the young, young little whippersnappers, I might be too old for Instagram, but I'm still cool and I'm proud to be 30. Um, oh, you got the new stats today, yay! Should we do pics of our own for those things? You can. Um, yay, yeah, what day, Brittany? Brittany, what day do you turn 30? Because I totally turn 30 next month. Um, you can do pictures of your own things. If you've got something cool, post it. Like uh, my dad, my dad is a, um, a graphic designer, graphic design engineer for BAE. Um, oh, June 24th, that's, that's my grandmother's birthday. I'm the 11th and my mom is the 14th. She was born on Flag Day, which is June 14th. And then she was baptized on the 4th of July. So... My whole house, my mom's whole house is red, white, and blue in the winter. Uh, summer, all summer. Um, I'm excited to be 30. I feel like I'm graduating. I'm graduating from the dumb 20s. No offense to anybody that's 20. I'm just saying sometimes I feel like I'm 22 until I hang out with a 22-year-old and go, nope, nope, I'm 30. <laughs> You're not turning 30. Are you older or younger? I'm not asking. Just kidding. You don't ask a woman's age. 50, that's fantastic. No, don't be horrified. Do you know how many people don't get the chance to celebrate their 50th birthday? I have learned that. I will never regret a single birthday. You know why? Because there are tons of people that did not get the chance to celebrate their 30th birthday. And when you turn 30, people think that it's this big downhill thing. But if you think about it, you have had 30 birthdays, right? 30 days of birth. That is a month. After next month, I will have had a complete month of birthdays. That's freaking epic. It's, I'm excited. I'm really excited to be 30. Facebook reach this far is 18,000 without boosting. That's fantastic. Um, but when you were to, somebody was asking about who, um, if you could post your own pictures, you could absolutely post your own pictures. Um, my whole point of talking about my dad was he does a lot of 3D printer work and he printed me a Nuka-Cola bottle and it's the coolest thing ever because I could not find a glass one, so he printed me one, and although this printed solid black, my mom then took it and painted it, so it had the new Coca-Cola sign, because I'm a wicked Fallout fan. Love the game Fallout. All right, so this is basically, you know, that's, those are the things to focus on. Aw, uh, thanks, Sam. <laughs> um, if, your if your sales are falling, do some research, check out your keywords, Figure out what keywords are working for you. See what keywords you have in your titles and stuff that aren't working for you and take them out. Look at your listings. What listings are worth pushing and editing? <gasps> Excuse me. And which listings are worth letting go? Let it go. Which, um, what, when was the last time you renewed a listing? If you didn't renew a listing today, renew a listing today. It's 20 cents. And don't tell me you can't afford it because you have to be able to afford it. You have to put money into your business. And if you invest, if you renew a listing every day, Monday through Friday, it's a dollar, one dollar. 
Put the Kit Kat back when you go food shopping and spend that dollar on renewing your listings. <laughs> um, what are you doing to market? Figure out how to market. What do your people want to see? What do you want to see? You're part of your market. You might not be your ideal target market, but what are you interested in? People are going to reflect when, you know, you people liked my shirt, right? I like my shirt, so I'm wearing it. So I'm obviously going to try to find stuff like this. Um, and silly phrases like this are what my target market likes. But I want a Kit Kat. Well, do you want a Kit Kat or do you want sales? You can either buy that one Kit Kat or you can get a sale and then buy 50 Kit Kats. Ah, uh, thanks, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys are on a Kit Kat crunch. Caramel M&M's. Oh my God, those never came to New Hampshire. I've never in my life seen a bag of caramel M&M's and caramel is my Achilles heel. I love it. Oh, caramel. You don't even know. You get me some chocolate covered caramels that have that sea salt crunch on top. I, I can't even. Can't even tell you the things mm -mm, that I would do for that caramel. <laughs> It's not appropriate. But, okay, so now that I am done my whole spiel, I always want chocolate. What, are there any questions? Don't all jump up at once. I know the comments are about to go, and I'm not gonna be able to see anything. But are there any questions um, on anything that we went over? Is there anything that you guys have questions on that I didn't go over that you just wanna talk to for a few? Oh my gosh. Seriously, I've, I've never seen a caramel m and If you mail them to me, can we be Lisa BFFs? We'll be Lisa Squared. <laughs> so in case anybody is wondering, I did do a video last week. I'm not sure it could have been deleted. Not deleted, not like deleted on purpose, but you know how awesome Facebook is lately with tips and tricks videos. Um, so if I type in... If anybody ever wants to follow me, I'm also, every time I do a video, I save it. Um, oh no, my video is still there. Okay, good. If you do a search in Club Flourish for tips and tricks, you will see last week's video. Um, also, if anybody wants to follow my channel on YouTube, I upload all of my tips and tricks videos. To here. Okay. Um, my husband has a CB2 tattoo with his best friend. Nice. Oh, okay, I'm saving that. I will send you my address. Is there a place the new stat in the new stats to see the number of favorites? Yes. Let me see. Let me get. As for inventory, hmm, it depends. Um, inventory fluctuates. Like, even though I offer 15 different colors of wire, I have 90% more of the silver, black, gold, and copper than any of the other colors because those are my four best sellers. So I would think of your previous history, whatever your best sellers are, and go with that. Um, orders, revenue... Do, 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 explore your data, traffic sources, search terms, social media, websites. You can see your favorites per item, not for the shop. Hmm. Etsy links aren't working for most Android customers. Well, that sucks. Is there some sort of hiccup with Facebook and Etsy? Some of my customers are saying that the link doesn't work. Oh, that's why people, that's why Jessica said the Etsy links aren't working for Android. Okay. What does the direct portion of the trafficked sources mean? Oh, that's if anybody clicked on a specific link. If you post your link in, say, Club Flourish, and you're asking for help on pictures. Hey, guys, this is my link. If I click that link, that's a direct visit. If somebody types in your um, shop name, that's a direct visit. If somebody's looking at a product on the uh, at a listing on Etsy and sometimes it'll suggest related items in different shops and I click that that's a direct link anything that isn't 
from a search is a direct link. If they didn't go to Google and type in something and then find you, if they didn't go to Etsy, type something and then find you, those are not direct. But if they click on a link, if they type in your search name, um, if they click on your listing, or it could be something they favorited before, if they clicked on a previous favorite, that's a direct link. Uh, all right, let's see. Okay. This whole new product, I expect, wow, 1,400 views in a week. Wow, that's awesome. Is there a way to see where they are clicking on it? I don't think so. Um, not other than checking the social media. Yeah, like see, even today, 60% of my social media has been from Pinterest. I really need to see nothing on Instagram. I don't use Twitter. Um, I show websites, which Pinterest, uh, Google and Etsy pages viewed through Etsy listings and my shop. Uh, oh God, people are still typing my old shop name. That's scary. Oh, um, it's if you have the new, do you have the new stats yet where it shows graphs? Because if you've got the new one where it shows graphs and stuff, um, you click on your shop manager and you just click regular stats. The, it's different now. Your dashboard is now your today's views, visits. Dashboard is going to show you everything about today. And your stats are going to show you everything. Yeah, so just click stats then and just keep scrolling. If I click stats and I've got it on today. Yeah, it shows you the nice little pie chart traffic sources. I've got Etsy, external search, which is anything from Google, Yahoo, Bing, or other search engines social media, direct, which I've got 23% direct. This is visits from people who typed your URL into the browser, bookmarked your page, or clicked a link in an email, an instant message, or on the mobile app. That is what a direct link is. And then other, um, other is new. Um, and I wrote what other was down before and I can't remember what it was now. But other was, th oh no, unknown. That was the unknown search term that they added now, which I don't know why they wouldn't be able to get valuable information from a search term, but if they can't get valuable information from a search term, they will classify it as other because it will make your stats match up better. I guess before, if they didn't have a classified search term or couldn't figure out the information from the search term, they would just leave it off. They wouldn't even tell you. So people's stats weren't matching up, so they added this new other. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? I'm going to just, I'll, I'll pretty much touch base on this whole stats thing as we go on. Um, Jessica, since you have the new stats, also notice that when you click on stats, there's three tabs at the top. It's going to say stats from May 23rd. You're going to see traffic, you're going to see listings, and you're going to see customers. Click all of those and you will just get so much information. And if you watch last week's video, I go over all of those in depth. Um, I posted a link to my YouTube where I upload all of my Chips and Tricks videos so you guys can watch them because who doesn't want to watch me 47 times in a row? Just kidding. <laughs> um, if anybody needs a shop critique, that is my other shop. I do do them. Um, I've got a few things planned this week and next week, but I can fit you in fairly quickly. Um, it is the shopdoc.co. Um, I do mini critiques. I do coaching calls. I do mentor calls. I may or may not do tips and tricks next week. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I have an appointment for with my surgeon about this fantastic hernia that I've got going on. So um, it's generally when I have an appointment, it's a very emotionally and physically draining day. But I might just do it later or earlier than 3 o'clock, or I might just skip it next week, so I'm not sure. Um, so no freaking out if there's no tips and tricks next week. And I'm sorry, everything just happens on Tuesdays. That's just how it is. <laughs> um, so if I don't see you guys next week, I am incredibly sorry. Um, but I will definitely see you the week after that. Feel free, to, if you're watching this later, to post any questions you have in the thread. You can PM me with any questions that you have. You can tag me on the wall. I'm Lisa Mitchell. Um, 
I hope you guys have a stellar week. No getting sad. No getting depressed. No Debbie Downers about any sales that are decursed stats that are going down. Just think about what you can do to increase it. What could you be working on to make tomorrow better than today? All right. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.